Before we get into the video, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe. Also, you can find us over on Instagram for more content that doesn't get posted onto YouTube. So this is my cross member and how I designed and engineered it the way I did. Now there are some cross members out there like the one from WFO Concepts that they offer for like $700. And if you look at it, it hangs way down from the frame, like five inches below the frame. So I didn't like that, and even then, it doesn't actually fit the uh, half-ton frames. It only fits the three-quarter and one-ton frames. Then if you look at some of the universal mounts that you can buy for, for link mounts, those also attach and hang below the frame just as far. So I didn't want to have my, my uh, link mounts hanging so low below the frame to hang up on. I was all about the low center of gravity and a lot of ground clearance for how low it's going to be. So that's why I decided to actually integrate the cross member into the existing cross member the way that I did. Now how I came up with the design for the cross member was first I mocked up the axle hanging in place uh, at where it would be equivalent to ride height just hanging with some ratchet straps at the relation of the vehicle of ride height. And then I put some square tube in the arm mounts and I swung them up to the cross member that was the factory cross member and I started marking it so I could see where they were going to hit and at what angle. It worked out to be about five degrees. And what that would do is give me a guide to where I wanted to have the cross member start holding the arms at what point and what angles the uh, cross member needs to hold the arms and at what spacing. And I didn't use a lot of real precise measurements. I literally just looked at where it wanted to be so that the joints would be neutral on the arms at ride height. So then I would have as much flex and cycle on the joints as possible for upward and downward travel because it would be neutral at ride height. After I marked on the frame for the control arm mounts where they wanted to be, I then cut out the frame where that was. And what that ended up being is where the factory transmission cross member bolted into the frame. So cut that out and I plated that in with 3 16 plate. And then welded in a universal control arm mount that's intended to weld onto like an axle or something to hold control arm. So it was the right 2 and 5 eighths inch spacing to hold the joint, had the right bolt size. So I welded those in. and then plated that in. And right on the frame where the two big kind of oval shaped holes are for where the original torsion bars went through that pocket on the frame, I had removed a lot of material on the front side, so I plated that back in as well. But on the back side, I left it open because that's how I get a nut onto the uh, back of the control arm bolt. So I can reach in there with a wrench and a nut and tighten up the control arm bolt still. That's why, um, it looks like you can't get to the nut, but actually you can. Then, once the uh, control arm mounts were welded onto that part of the frame, 
that left nowhere for the transmission cross member to bolt. So I took some universal weld on tabs and welded onto it and used uh, just some you know, sleeve for the bolt that was uh, cut down to the correct length. And I took the factory transmission cross member and drilled holes for the uh, bolts and sleeve and then welded the sleeve in. So that's where the bolt rides is actually on a sleeve inside that hollow cross member. So I'm actually running the factory transmission cross member that's been shortened by several inches. On your phone, you uh. 